A couple of years ago, Nikon released the D4 as their flagship DSLR. Now they've released the D4S as their new top-of-the-line DSLR, and it's everything the D4 was and more. Let's have a look. Hi, I'm Larry Becker, and this is Nikon's new D4S. It looks a lot like the D4 pros have loved for the past couple of years, and there are improvements that justify a new model name. But with tech companies, when they add an S to the model name, it gives the hint that this is probably going to be an incremental improvement as opposed to something really huge. Just like the D4, it has a 16.2 megapixel CMOS FX format full frame sensor, but this time it's paired with a new processor. It's the X Speed 4. And other mechanical and firmware improvements come together to deliver an even faster performance and greater accuracy. This means that there's improved burst shooting, improved autofocus algorithms, improved image detail, and improved video capture capabilities. The native ISO now goes from 100 to 25,600, and it can be boosted up to 409,600, or down to 50. I don't do side-by-side -side lab tests, and while I've had hands-on with a D4 from time to time over the past couple years, I haven't been shooting one daily like lots of pros have been for the past two years. But even without daily D4 use, I can definitely tell the performance is improved, and the high-speed burst shooting is an even better experience. The D4 could shoot 11 frames a second, but only with focus and exposure locked. Now with the D4S, you get to shoot 11 frames a second with active autofocus and exposure adjustments, and there's less viewfinder image blackout. The focus point even remains visible while you're burst shooting. And Nikon says they've improved the mirror balancer so the optical viewfinder image is even more stabilized during those bursts. If accuracy during burst capture matters to your shooting style, you'll love this setup. The 51-point autofocus of the D4 was amazing, and Nikon says they've not only improved their algorithms to capture and maintain focus more accurately, but they've also added a new autofocus mode. Now, there are the options that we're used to, like single-point autofocus, dynamic area, 3D tracking, and auto area autofocus. And now, there's group area autofocus. It's like the control that we have with single-point autofocus, but the system also pays attention to the four focus points just above, below, to the left, and to the right of the main focus point. This is my new favorite focusing method, and I'm using it more than my previous favorite single point autofocus. The low light, high ISO performance of the D4 was really impressive, and the D4S has an even better high end. But even though the native high end moves up from 12,800 on the D4 to 25,600 on the D4S, and the boosted high end goes from 204,800 on the D4, to 409,600 on the D4S. It actually sounds a little more impressive than it is. It's one stop of additional light sensitivity. And that's pretty noisy up there in the high numbers anyway. ISO 12,800 on the D4S does seem slightly less noisy than 12,800 on the D4, but that alone probably won't have D4 users trading in their gear anytime soon. While we're talking about bigger numbers, a few other specs have been boosted, and some of these bigger numbers are going to make a big difference for some shooters. The interval shooting limit lets you capture 9,000 more images than the previous ceiling of 999. Ethernet speeds are now 10 times faster at 1,000 base T. And because there's a new model of battery, the ENEL18A, you can expect 3,020 shots per charge up from 2,600 shots with the D4 and its battery. Oh, and if you're upgrading from a D4 and you own a bunch of its ENEL18 batteries, those will still work. You just won't get the same number of shots you will with the new batteries. As a camera raw shooter, I appreciate that there are several options that'll affect the raw image file size. And the new option to capture smaller 12-bit uncompressed raw 
Nikon calls these size S files, means that post-processing can be even faster. With respect to in-camera image processing, Nikon has added an active D lighting setting. Now, active D has been available for years throughout the camera lineup. Active D boosts shadow and highlight detail in high contrast images, and there are a number of possible settings available. The D4S adds extra high two on top of the previous extra high, but the difference is so subtle that I couldn't even get an image comparison where I could see a noticeable difference. One place you'll definitely see a difference is with video capture performance. The previous best quality movie capture was 1080p 30, at a data rate of 24 megabits per second. Now that upper limit is 1080p 60, and the data rate is now up to a high setting of 42 megabits per second, or a normal rate of 24 megabits per second. 1080p 60 is a lot of data, so you're gonna be limited to about 10 minutes for high quality shooting and 20 minutes of capture for normal. If you need more than that, you can drop the frame rate to 30 frames a second, or you can use the camera to capture the video and plug in an external recording device so that you can stream an uncompressed, high-quality video signal. So far, I've just compared the D4S to the D4 because people want to know what's new. But if you're just starting to look at the high end of Nikon DSLRs and you don't have a base of knowledge about the D4, it'll help to know about the great performance the D4 already delivers. In my original D4 review, I talked a lot about speed. The D4S is just as fast or faster in lots of ways. The dual card slot, compact flash, and XQD memory card performance is fast. Image transfer is faster. And things like offloading images using the optional WT5A wireless adapter will be faster with those smaller camera raw file size options. Plus, as with the D4, the option to embed IPTC data as you shoot means that if you're shooting for a bureau, you can upload wirelessly direct from your camera with your IPTC data already embedded. Just like its predecessor, the D4S is sturdy, it's weather sealed, it has a magnesium alloy body, and the grip is for vertical and horizontal use, with most controls repeated in the vertical orientation. By the way, the shutter is still rated for 400,000 actuations. Things like the shutter button and command and subcommand dials are in the same relative position vertically. And while the PV and FN buttons aren't repeated on the face of the camera, there is a programmable FN button by the shutter when you're holding the camera vertically. Nikon says that they've slightly changed the grip shape and controls, but it's nothing that you'll notice without a side-by-side -side comparison. The D4S also features the same 3.2-inch, 921,000-dot rear LCD monitor as the D4, but it improves on it with the ability to fine-tune the color settings of the screen to match external monitors or ambient light conditions. I've always liked the convenience of the on-off collar around the shutter button. There's a spring-loaded position just passed on that illuminates LCD panels and backlights on many Nikon cameras, and of course, it's great that the D4 and the D4S also light up all your major buttons so that working in dark environments is considerably easier. We've talked about the video improvements, but the D4 was already among Nikon's best performers for pro video in other ways. There's the mic jack for external audio and a headphone jack for monitoring that audio. You can adjust the audio manually. There's a dedicated movie record button and you can make adjustments to your aperture and shutter speed while you're recording movies. Both the D4 and the new D4S are incredibly customizable. You can program or reprogram most any controller or button on the whole camera, including the shutter button. So if you want to use a remote trigger to fire the shutter and have that start movie recording instead of shooting stills, you can do that. You can adjust auto ISO settings to be different based on the focal length of the lens that you happen to be using at the time. And one of my favorite things is that there are four shooting menu banks, and they're named A, B, C, and D by default, but you can rename them and use them to store all the custom settings that you program into your camera. So if you set up your entire camera for night football games, that can be a setting. Then change to a different shooting bank that you've programmed earlier, 
and everything can be set for indoor news conferences. Or maybe you share your D4S with other shooters and you need to assign a shooting menu bank for each shooter's preferences. The D4 and the new, faster D4S are at the top of Nikon's DSLR lineup and they'll make pros and high-end enthusiasts really happy. You hear people say all the time, it's not the camera, it's the photographer that matters, but sometimes with tricky subjects, low light, maybe fast action, the camera does make the difference. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.